We're coming in hot with inspiring guests, witty banter, and colorful commentary for today's veterans and military community. This is the Tango Alpha Lima Podcast. They call me crazy because I'm facing all my giants. They try to scare me into thinking I can't fight it. They tell me I should never even think of trying. But that's just me. I'm going to live out in defiance. All right. Hello and welcome back to the Tango Alpha Lima Experience. I'm Jeff Daly, nestled in here in Los Angeles on the opposite coast at the capital is Ashley Marie Gorbolja Maldonado. How's the, Atlantic, how's the Atlantic Ocean? I don't know. I haven't seen it in a while. <laughs> I never go to the Pacific Ocean myself. So, nope, don't do it. I just don't do it. What am I going to do? I'm not trying to get a tan. Don't need the beach life. Here we go. We are going to uh, roll right into today's episode because we have we have a guest that has so many things to say and we just, we got to get to it. But first, first, because it's Women's History Month, is it just military history is it for all women, March? It's, so it's technically for all women, but we also celebrate like military women's history as a part of, I like guess it's kind of, think of it like a subsect of women's history. Because obviously you can put it by like occupation, you can put it by all kinds of different categories. So it could but- be- we recognize it in the community as military women's memorial, like so or, could I'm be, sorry, military women's. So it could be uh, chemistry month. professor women's history month. I mean, yeah. we celebrate women chemists like Matt Curry go. or, you know, amazing women scientists who have yep. trailblazed. Yep. Got it. We, we got to represent some folks on my page. All right. So let's get down to it. So it's military women's history month and we've got a special, special person that we're going to talk about today. So. Some people say, oh, when was the first uh, general? Well, we're going to talk about her today. So her name is Anna May Hayes, and she became the first Army general. It's pretty awesome, right? So she joined the Army Nurses Corps in 1942. She, just like many women who felt the need to serve their country and after the attack on Pearl Harbor, but in the decades followed, her military military career uh, proved to be more than a singular one. So including her June 11th, 1970 promotion to Brigadier General, the first time a woman ever wore the stars of a general officer in the U.S. Armed Forces. Now, I just want to put this in a reference point here. It took us 200 years in the Army to promote a woman to general. So let's just just put that, let's just wrap our minds around that for a second, okay? So when we talk about progress, we talk about this is 1970. Like women were still trying to get credit cards in their own names okay it wasn't that long ago my grandmother is still like lived through that like think about this time range here okay so what's super amazing about uh, Anna is that she started her career at wartime she had this long and fruitful career and through the army heritage uh, center foundation new york state native she deployed to india in january of 1943 she helped American soldiers build roads in China. And then next thing you know, she's in an operating room. And in more than two years, for more than two years, excuse me, and uh, assisted 49,000 patients. That's insane. And that's when she was first promoted to first lieutenant. So while many of her colleagues, you know, were left, you know, in service in World War II, she remained active duty. She deployed to Korea War in the 1950s. She just went on to do amazing things. She went on to lead the emergency room at Walter Reed Army Medical Center. Um, and President Eisenhower happened to be one of the notable uh, patients. So after a series of promotions, as one imagines through the Army ranks, she became a chief of Army Nurse Corps in 1967. And then she um, she upped uh, recruitment efforts to send more nurses to Vietnam, the Vietnam War, and then she went on and visited the country several times during the conflict to assess the state of nursing. So super incredible woman, but I think we also need to, for just a moment here, a few minutes later after Anna's ceremony, another woman, Elizabeth Hosington, also, well, she and she was the director of the Women's Army Corps, became the second general at the same ceremony in June 11, 1970. So there's a little fun fact for you. So two women got promoted to general the same day. But Anna was the first. 
and oh, are you saying was the second are you saying the stars aligned that day absolutely the they did general stars yes they did for yeah. some amazing women you're you're ignoring my joke but that's okay i uh, am acknowledging it <laughs> <laughs> i was I just do. so starstruck by your your See? star your choice of words mm -hmm. it's just so shining and, and bright and authentic it's and just, leading the way so yeah. it was uh is that why they have stars? Because stars lead the way you navigate with this. <gasps> Maybe that's Maybe. why journals have stars. I don't know. We'll have, have somebody, to look that somebody, somebody send us an email and let us know if that's accurate. There's or gotta Jeff, be someone out there. Or Jeff Stouffer could probably give us a two-hour lecture on it. It's so probably true. <laughs> he probably does. He knows all he he knows what does he know, Ashley? All the things. All the things. Yes, Jeff Stouffer knows all the things. Wow, he just said his name three times. So uh I this is exciting i uh that this this happened and I'm, I'm more excited about the accomplishments and i've i've always said that uh accomplishments earned or you know uh, re awards and recognition earned through accomplishments are the best awards and recognition mm -hmm. and uh she did that here probably never cared about being a general just cared about doing her mission and all of that. Uh, I, I find that people who aren't people who aren't seeking anything, like the 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 somebody else that we're going to talk to, people who aren't seeking something, they're not seeking a title, they're not seeking uh, praise, they're not seeking any of that. Always end up with it, and I yeah. I think that that's that's the best stuff, and that's the stuff that uh, I like to promote uh, with with people including women at my post we're doing you know mm -hmm. we're doing things to just um just lift up those who contribute and right. sometimes do it anonymously or under the radar because that's just where they they prefer to work so you know there's a there's a term for that right term for which thing so kind of what to to the overall arching theme of what you're describing right so we've all heard of the glass ceiling but in the military it's called the brass ceiling so it's this expression, obviously, to declare this invisible barrier that keeps women and minorities from top level positions in business and government. Uh, you know, the term brass ceiling refers to the same problem in the military and law enforcement and where brass is the term for the high ranking officers and officers, of course, have lots of medals, right? So breaking the brass ceiling means women and minorities can finally be promoted to higher positions, right? So talking about like from a humility standpoint and from women who are just there doing their jobs or may view themselves as, oh, I just, I just did what was asked of me, right? Or they may see themselves as visible. I just, you know, I'm really happy to hear that your post and other posts around the country are continuing to combat that invisible language because we are visible, we're here. And despite having this, this brass ceiling that was broken by these two amazing women, right? So we've got Anna and then we've also got Elizabeth P. Hosenton. Like these two women like set the tone to allow other women to get into these high ranking officer positions. So you keep doing what you're doing, Jeff. Thank you for being, thank you for being so thoughtful and really supporting. Just never tell anybody that. Friends. I like, I like living in this world where my inner jerk is what gets, what gets uh, projected to the world. So mm -hmm. this woman didn't just attain the stars herself. She did, uh, more directly set up things in the future because uh, she made some recommendations that actually led to policy. Uh, and I would say like, and some of that policy if I'm reading here, no longer automatically discharging married officers for becoming pregnant or limiting who could be appointed the Army Nurse Corps Reserve based on their dependents. So mm -hmm. is that's another layer of how you don't get to be general because most women in that time had children and got married and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, well, in that time, they did it in the opposite order. They got married and then they had children. Today, it's you do what you want. So it's uh, so taking away that barrier to advancement mm -hmm. uh, was huge in a very real, concrete, not even overtly uh, sexist. It was it was you know we use the word too form. much. Yeah. We use the word too much, but it was systemic. Mm -hmm. It was literally in the system that if you were pregnant, you got to go. You're gone, right? Yep. Not a leave. You're gone. Mm -hmm. So 
that's awesome. So I, I, I love that uh, this story for women's history, women's military history uh, is a good one and an uplifting one and an inspiring one. Mm -hmm. And I'm super excited for our guest. And I know Ashley will be too. And I know super producer Holly is, and you'll find out why later. Uh, today, we're gonna be joined by Leah Mort. Leah was born and raised in Pennsylvania and joined what branch? United States Marine Corps. So she joined United States Marine Corps in 1986. She served as an electronics cryptographic repair technician, which is probably the least Marine thing I can think of right now. That's a lot of syllables in a short, amount of space. She did it at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina from 1986 to 1990. She joined the Army Reserve after 9-11 and deployed to Iraq in 2003 and then again in 2009. She also deployed as an Army civilian with WMD Coordination Team 4 to Afghanistan from 2011 to 2012. In addition to serving the military, uh, Mort has been a firefighter, healthcare worker, warehouse worker, commercial trade tractor trailer driver, chicken hatchery worker, horse farm labor, retail hardware cook, and has also worked in various construction trades, or as Ashley would say, she's done. All the things. All the things. Fans of CBS television competition series, Tough as Nails, might also recognize Leah as the leader of the season three winning team, Dirty Hands. Uh, currently, Leah is a U.S. Army Reserve Chief Officer, Chief Warrant Officer Three. She lives in Richfield, Pennsylvania, with her husband John, and is a member of American Legion Post Twenty Five, where she is on the Honor Guard and the Legion Riders. We are going to be right back with a powerhouse after this break. A veteran is a veteran. A veteran is a veteran. A veteran is a veteran. The American Legion embraces all current and former members of the military and endeavors to help them transition into their communities. We are Veterans Strengthening America. We are the American Legion. All right, we are joined here via DSL. If you didn't think it still exists, it really does. We're here today with Leah Mort, who's coming in from Pennsylvania. And we're gonna hear about a lot of her friends that are there later uh, with her that you can't see. They're outside, but uh, thanks for being on the show. And how are you today? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm great here in Pennsylvania with uh, DSL and uh, the dinosaurs. It's, uh, it's wonderful. <laughs> I, love, uh, I, I love that you were on uh, Tough as Nails. We, you weren't here to hear us talking all about you earlier, but we did. We talked all about you. And Ashley's trying to be tough. You see that on her hand there? I do. She's trying to be. Just to the other guy. No, I'm just kidding. No, it's, it's, it's actually, it's an okay story, but that's what I've been telling people lately. <laughs> she's tough as a broken nail, but she's going to pull it together and uh, start the questioning. I hope you're ready. Ooh. I'm ready. Here, Sorry there. about the coffee about in the background. That's my dog. Okay. Oh, that's we okay. love dogs. We love I, dogs. I mean, they do. Nothing lives in my apartment except me. I don't even have a plant. But uh, Ashley, <laughs> oh, that's sad. We're going to have to get you a plant, something, something you can take responsibility of. Oh, my goodness. Anywho. All righty. So, Leah, thank you for being on the show. Super excited to dig a little bit more in your background. You have such a wide variety of, of service. I mean, you, you, what? Marine Sergeant. You're a Chief Warrant Officer 3, RMA. All right. And uh, you also, in your free time, you know, you're in Lancaster, PA, hanging out. You got all your critters and uh, you're also tough as nails. So we're going to dive a little bit into that too. But first, let's talk a little bit about your military career and just kind of this trajectory that you've been on. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I don't know how to make them go away. I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> Here's the team I too. That's why I closed the door. Oh, That's no. what my mom said. She didn't know how to make me go away. But uh, here I am. We're talking about my military career. Was that the question? Yeah, Leah. Let's 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 like let's let's peel back the layers. You started off as a marine. You still are a marine always, right? You somehow managed to get into some other army, and now you're a chief warrant officer three. You're doing all this stuff. Like, let's talk a little bit about your career progression and how you've gotten to where you are today. 
Yeah. Oh, okie dokie. Um, well, back out of high school, I had no idea what to do. I had no skills and no direction. So I decided to join the military and uh, thought the uh, Marine Corps would be the hardest physically and mentally because they had the longest boot camp at 13 weeks. <laughs> Very nice, Jeff. Uh, <laughs> love the hat. And so uh, out of, out of uh, high school, I, I worked a little bit and then went directly into the Marine Corps. And I, I went in open contract, which is crazy, uh, where they, uh, you, I was very naive back then. And uh, I figured that Marine Corps would, you know, do whatever they needed to do that was best for the Marine Corps and possibly for me. And so I, uh, I was picked up for, as a radio operator and went out to 29 Palms, California after basic training. And while I was there, uh, one of the colonels that was in charge, I guess he looked at our records and he said, he saw some of my scores and said, I would probably be better suited for electronics, which was also on the base. So I, uh, they switched me over from radio operator to radio repairer and went through electronics school, uh, zipped out to Fort Gordon, Augusta, Georgia, which is an, an army base and uh, finished up my electronics training there and then went down to Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, where I was uh, for the duration, uh, the rest of my enlisted time in the Marine Corps. So that was 86 to 90. I got out, um, had a lot of different jobs. Uh, at the time, I was a professional firefighter and 9-11 occurred. And I said to my husband, I, I can't just stand by and do nothing. So uh, I wanna go back in the military. And so I went into the Army Reserve in 2002, I was promptly deployed in 2003 to Iraq. And, uh, and the rest is, is uh, I guess it's history. I, I've been to Iraq twice and Afghanistan uh, once. Um, and um, I'm still in as a chief warrant officer, um, all source intelligence analyst. And hopefully I'll be picking up chief warrant officer four in May. I made the list. I just have to keep breathing until then. and wait for the, uh, the order saying I'm promoted. That's amazing. Congratulations. And actually, you. I know you're not done with her, but I have to interrupt because, <laughs> oh, uh, gosh. I'm really disappointed. Leah, you said that you did electronics. You know, I, I have some syllables. I have to get out of your job title, electronics, cryptographic repair, repair technician. technician. Yes. That is, that is a job. Like that's amazing. Okay. Thank you. It, it's this, the electrons flow the same way, no matter how many words you put in the title. But you need those words in the title to know that the electrons all flow the same, because I don't know that. <laughs> I love it. We got to put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> no matter how many words or syllables are in your title, electricity and uh, electronics is same basic principles. Okay. Too easy. So, sorry, Ashley. Get back to you. <laughs> no, that's great. So, okay. So we've, we've established that you, we're just going to manifest and speak in existence that you're going to become, you know, chief warrant officer or all right, let's oh, get boy. it. What exactly? You just got to manifest. You just got to speak it in existence. Leah. That is like well, my the, the, daily the army has level. to actually put it in print. Um, that's, that's, the that's part great. That counts. That's <laughs> as, as a former NCO apps. Absolutely. Yep. I believe it when I see it in writing. So you got, exactly. the, you got the mindset, but keep telling yourself, I got this, I got this. Cause we oh, know you. I got, got it. it. I made the list. I just have to keep breathing. And there you go. You know, not. Not anything. go snowboarding like Ashley. Yeah. Don't, don't go just... snowboarding. Oh, I, I, I was in Pennsylvania when I did this. So, you know, it yes. is what, it is. what a great place to get tougher. Yeah. <laughs> well, Speaking of tougher, and I, I think Jeff may may take the reins on this, but did you did you want to ask about uh, tough as nails, Jeff? No, go ahead. No, no. Oh, okay, okay. I'm just you know, I like to I like to make sure we take turns here on the show because I don't I don't ever want to upset Jeff. Um, so you got to tell us about tough as nails. So you were selected for season three. Tell us, like, for the audience, what is tough as nails, and how did you just dominate the competition? We, you got to know. We got to know how you did it. Uh, okay. First of all, I have to say, I don't believe I dominated anything. <laughs> um, some, some challenges crushed me pretty thoroughly. 
So let's not let's not blow it out of proportion. Um, but uh, tough as nails is just an absolutely wonderful television reality show that uh, is a competition between um, the skilled trades uh, or people that have skilled trades. Um, so I'm sure not sure how I got on the show at all. Um, because I went on as a Jill of all trades, but I'm not really skilled at any of them. I'm just, uh, I have a hand in them. So I'm, I have a familiarity. I love, I love working with my hands. I like that challenge of uh, figuring out how to make things work. And um, I can't say that anything I've ever done has come out perfect, but um, it's got the good enough stamp of approval. And um, most things I've done continue to function properly. So I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, so the, the show is great. It, there's, there's 12 competitors on each season. And um, the basis for the show is there's two types of competitions. There's individual competitions where um, all 12 start out competing against each other. And then there's also team competitions where those 12 are broken down into two teams of six. And then those teams compete against each other. Uh, there's um, prize money. And then there's also um, different prizes throughout the show for winning an individual competition. And there's team prize money. So um, it was just a great experience. Uh, the thing I like about the show is it's a very positive show. You can watch it with your kids, grandparents, everybody can enjoy the show. There's a lot of good messages there, a lot of good examples for how life should look, uh, conflict resolution, just getting a better understanding of each other. There's a lot of respect and just good sportsmanship. So I can't say enough about what uh, Phil Kogan and his wife Louise have done producing that show and keeping that positive energy. And I can't thank them enough for, for sharing that experience with me. Um, I don't know how they select the competitors. Uh, what I mean, I know the process because I went through it, but you still, at the end of the show, uh, you're, I'm still shaking my head going, how'd that happen? Um, I, I'm not sure what they saw in me or what they, they're looking for in competitors, but I'm glad they saw it. And um, it's, a, it's an experience of a lifetime. I think it changes your life, changes your perspective. It's, it's, it's a positive, positive, uh, geez, I'm losing words here. Take that out. Uh, <laughs> it's, 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 oh, go ahead, Jeff. Oh, no, I was going to say, you're, it's, you're, you may not be aware of why they chose you, but I'm reading why they chose you. So it's, it's right here in, in print. You have, uh, it's, you're almost like a ringer. They probably shouldn't have let you on because you have too many of the, too many of the skills. And the, the and the and the you're, you're, you have the quippy one liners too. I mean, I love all of it. So uh, being on that show with in in that competition, do you feel? And and it's the answer seems obvious to me. But all of the things that you did leading up to being on that show obviously helped you in that the, the competition. And what would you say are the were the most important attributes that you brought from your experience that helped you do well in the competition? Well, I, I guess the, the biggest attribute that helped me on the show is experience. Uh, I'm in my fifties. I just turned 55 uh, October of last year. So um, that's a lot of time to try different things and uh, to get a grasp of how things work. Um, also, I find that your mindset's a lot different in your fifties than it is in your twenties, thirties, and forties. Um, you're, you're, I think by this time in your life, you're more comfortable with yourself. Um, you're not concerned about proving yourself anymore. At least I'm not. I mean, I don't feel I have anything to prove to myself or anybody else. I've, I've done a lot of cool things. I've had some great experiences. So uh, things I do now are just for the fun of getting to experience what I'm doing. So going into the show, I, I didn't go to win. I wanted to have a blast to, to have a new experience, just to, to meet new people and do things I've never done before. So um, I wanted to stay in as long as I could because 
then I get to do more cool things. Right. And so that that was my that was my attitude going into the show. Um, when you're in your 20s and 30s, you care a lot about not everybody, but you know you're worried about what other people think and how you look and 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 just possibly you know proving to yourself and others that you you can do things or that you're capable. And um, I really that doesn't. If I I'm fail, I you. fail. I'm... <laughs> I don't like I'm with you, but the problem is when you have that attitude at 12. People, uh, they look at you funny. Like I couldn't care less since elementary school what anybody thought of me. I'm not trying to prove anything to anybody. Uh, it's just it's, I get called arrogant. You're you you're being called brilliant. So let's. <laughs> I, I I don't think that's what I'm being called, but okay, we'll go with that, Jeff. I'll just I'll call you that. So we're, let's let's move let's move let's let's fast forward a little bit, because uh, you're. You're, uh, you're, again, all the things that you bring, it seems to me culminated in what you're doing right now. So tell us about your business. Oh, I don't have a business yet, but I want to have a business soon. It, okay. it doesn't happen overnight. Uh, yeah. nope. Most things that take hard work, uh, most things that take hard work don't happen overnight. So um, what I am starting to do is to build a challenge course based on the finale of Tough as Nails. Um, we'll have stations, you get the bus through a wall and then maybe there'll be a wheelbarrow challenge and then there'll be a challenge where you have to stack something to climb up on a, a mock shipping container and maybe you know, untie some ropes or chains and whatever tool you're detangling, you take down and move into another challenge and then back up on another shipping container. And then, and then hopefully we'll have, uh, you know, a ladder to build and climb or put up and climb or a cargo net. So uh, there's a lot of uh, obstacles in the way of starting a business like this. Um, you need to secure insurance. I, another obstacle for me is I live in the woods and so I have a large area of trees I need to clear to put up this course. And so that's, uh, that's step one right now uh, is clearing that area. In the meantime, I'm uh, working over what the obstacles are gonna be, how to build them. I'm pulling in a bunch of folks from the community who have been farmers or, or in the trades, um, people who've worked in Lump, clearing lumber and, and things like that. I'm going to be getting together with them so that we can design these challenge courses. Um, in the beginning, we'll stick with one course for a couple months, but then we're going to switch over to having a different theme every month. So one month might be military challenges and the next month will be firefighter challenges and another could be masonry, bricklaying challenges. So I want to do themes um, so that people get a new experience every time they come back. Uh, and I had a suggestion to do Renaissance type skills. So maybe like uh, building a barrel with, uh, you know, the, the metal rings around them and uh, things of that nature. Uh, so I think we can have a lot of fun with it. It can, it can change all the time, be something new. And, and people, um, the reason I want to do it is because not everybody's going to get on Tough as Nails. And I want to share that excitement um, and just, it, there's so much joy in, for me, uh, having to go through those challenges and see, uh, you know, kind of what you're made of, you know, how well you think through these things. Uh, so it's mental, it's, it's, it's physical. So, and, and then from there, that'll be for like 18 and older. And then I'd like to have a smaller course for kids. And then we could do uh, group events too, like team building and things like that and do some team challenges like you saw on Tough as Nails too. So, I mean, it, it's just endless of the possibilities of what we can do. Uh, we're gonna call it Tougher Than Tough and um, have a logo and all that I can send you. It's, it's a really neat logo um, because it's three T's, Tougher Than Tough. So the logo has three sledgehammers up with a broken chain underneath and then um, mind, 
heart, soul, and strength as, as kind of like the motto underneath. So, I mean, it's not just about physical strength. It's, it's just a, a well-rounded strength in, in your mind, body, spirit, and, and your soul to, to be able to uh, get out there, put yourself out there outside your comfort zone and, and give it a shot. So I, I'm really excited about it. I'm hoping we have it ready by summer, but uh, I'm just going to take it one day at a time and uh, see if the weather cooperates to uh, keep clearing and, and get things built. Well, you know, you if you look to expand your scope, you you could have a, a dating show. I did hear you talking about uh, escaping from chains and whatever. <laughs> Oh wait, is that just is that just me? No. Oh, it's just you, Jeff. And just you, bud. Just yeah. you. So, uh, super producer Holly will murder us if we don't uh, ask for your roster of friends, complete with names. Uh, we need the names. No. No. Friends, the the friends that are helping me. No, outside. The animals. Oh, 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 those friends. Um, yes. Um, I've I've come to call our property the. Farm in the woods, and uh, that's woods with a Z. <laughs> and uh, well, we have a lot of animals here um, because I just I enjoy being around them. Uh, there's a lot to be learned uh, hanging out with uh, alpacas and mini donkeys. And we have uh, my horse is 30 years old now. She's we've been together 28 years. I have a couple puppy dogs, a cat, a goat chickens a turkey i also race pigeons and um and i'm a falconer so from time to time i'll either have a red tail hawk or a kestrel um that that comes to stay with us for a while and i hunt with and then then release it back into the to wild again when it's uh it's done hunting in in march so there are a lot of great things going on here i, I love being outside and i love the unpredictability of uh what's going to happen next you never well, know. what's the because I want to see Holly chuckle again. What are the names of the the mini donkeys and uh... okay, our mini donkeys are a uh, uh, mom and daughter pair. Uh, the the I call mama I call her mama, but her name's Dunky D U N K Y. Um, my husband named her. He said she's as sweet as a donut, so we named her after Dunkin' Donuts. So she is Dunky. <laughs> and her her daughter's name is uh, Tater, like Ron White's. They call me Tater because oh. <laughs> she is full of herself and so mischievous, such a troublemaker. But but we love her. Uh, Ron White, member of Hollywood Post Forty Three in California, just slide throw that out there. Um, <laughs> awesome, um, that's great. Um, I I didn't know that. So yeah, that's cool. I'll have to check it out. And uh, um, your your Hollywood Post, or not Hollywood Post, your American Legion Post twenty five, huh? Roger, yes, I am. Yep, it's a good post. Uh, I'm on the honor guard there. A lot of great guys. Uh, I think it's a misrepresented uh, uh, organization as far as uh, getting some of the younger veterans in. And and you don't have to be a veteran. We have uh, sons of the American Revolution and and uh, other Legion members that weren't veterans that. Uh, that uh, take their time to go out and honor uh, our brothers and sisters who have, have uh, been called home by the Supreme Commander, as, as we say at the, uh, the, um, the uh, funerals that we go to. So I think it's important to recognize our veterans uh, that have served and, and their families. It means a lot to the family. So it's, it's time well spent. All right. Ashley. Um, Oh, I didn't know if you wanted anybody else's names. Uh, oh, you have, um, you have other cool names? Oh my gosh, yes. Our, our two alpacas are, are Billy the Kid and Buck. Billy Kid and, and Buck. Um, well, when we got the, the female alpacas, we didn't know that they were pregnant. It's hard to tell. They could have been, they could, you know, who knows. And um, in December 20th, my husband calls me over the kitchen window and he says, look, and I'm looking out at are three female alpacas and they're looking down at this baby deer and I'm like oh my goodness how did that baby deer get in with the alpacas and then I'm thinking about it you know deer don't have babies in December and I, I'm like oh my gosh it's a baby alpaca and we go rushing out there with blankets and 
the little guy was soaking wet, 11 pounds. And well, we got him in and got a heat lamp and, and, and everything turned out well. But since it was a little boy alpaca and I thought it was a deer, we named him Buck. And uh, so that's how Buck got his name. And then the next year in September, my husband goes out to feed the alpacas and he yells down to me, what are the baby goats got in with the alpacas? And I'm like, I'm looking at the baby goats and they're all down with me. And I run up and there it is, another baby alpaca. So uh, boy goats are called Billies and baby goats are called kids. So we named him Billy the Kid. And there you have it. That is adorable and just such even your naming scheme is point. next level. Right? Thanks. I, I, I won't get into our pigeons. Well, no, I'll tell you one pigeon <laughs> because, well, no, I'm going to tell you a couple and you can keep it or leave it, whatever. Um, I named my pigeons. Most racers do not name their pigeons. They have bands on them with numbers. But uh, I named one pair Clark Kent and Lois Lane. And all their babies are named after superheroes. So we got the Green Lantern, Shazam, the Flash, the Hulk, Hero, and Hercules are their babies right now. And then I have a pair called Marge and Homer. So their first two babies are Bart and Lisa. And then I have White Lightning and Bootleg. And their first two babies are uh, Moonshine and Malibu Rum. So... Uh, and there's a lot more names and my husband's always like, I don't know how you tell the difference. And I'm like, I don't know. They just, a lot of them look alike. I'll be honest, but uh, <laughs> they're well, a lot Hawk. That does it give the, the, the one called Hawk. Does it give uh, that bird an inferior uh, superiority complex over the rest? I'm Hawk. Oh no. Oh, not Hawk. I'm sorry. Hulk. H-U-L-K. Oh, Hulk. Hulk. Yeah. Hulk yeah, okay. smash. Yeah. Yeah. That. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> I, just, I just want to come down to the farm and I just want you to introduce me to all the animals. Like, come down I anytime. Do. You you <laughs> are always welcome. Uh, I tell everybody, please come down, meet the animals, hang out, have a good time. It, there's, there is no sense having a property and all these wonderful animals and keeping them to myself. You know, it's it's things are better shared. So if anybody ever wants to come and visit they're always welcome. Awesome. Outstanding. So Ashley, you got anything else? I mean, we've gone through I, a lot. We, we have, and I have to say, as, as you're going through this, um, this, like this business of, of creating these, these skill oriented tasks and kind of like, I was just thinking as you were speaking, I was like, man, I hope she's doing a kid's version of this because I, you know, I, I grew up in Ohio and you know, believe it or not, I, I knew a lot of folks went to military or I'm sorry, went to a, a career center in Simondina County. There's a lot of MCCs in there, but I knew a lot of folks in 4-H and I couldn't tell you how many like technical and like trade opportunities there are and to have an opportunity to, to educate children and also from like a 4-H standpoint and everything that you're doing, I think is incredible. Um, and then also just kind of challenging kids too. Like, I don't know, like to me, like that really like that stuck out. Like, I mean, I know I'd bring my snowboarding crew up and like, you know, we'd go head to head, toe to toe teams and we'd go to challenges because that would be of interest to me because we're always looking for like new fun things to do. So I just love the ideas that you have. And I love that you just, you just, you just ooze joy, Leah. Like you just ooze joy in everything you. you do. And I love it. And you're just, you're just so fun. I love it so much. Oh my goodness. All right. That's more well, of a comment. Oh, then. sorry. Thanks no, no, so no, much. You're well, All right, I, Leah. I will say. Oh, okay, sorry. Nope, you go. Because I wasn't okay, going to. Sure. Well, on that, I, I've, I've been invited to do some speaking engagements. And one of them is to Awana, which is, um, it's a, it's a, it's a church group for kids. And a lot of different churches have it, but uh, my local church has wanted to do a tough as nails night. So working on some challenges that we can do in their open gym with the kids just to, uh, it, you know, show them some possibilities, get them thinking outside of, of whatever, you know, box that they're in, you know, we do this or we do that, you know, just let them know that there are other things they can do or try and and maybe, you know, light a little fire under them to, to want to be out there, be active, 
get out of their comfort zone and try new things. So uh, I'm excited about that uh, coming up in March. Absolutely. It makes me think of like the confidence courses. Like I did some of those and then I just remember being in, you know, basic training and we'd have to work together. And I think, I think it's an important skill and I'm glad that you're out there teaching it and promoting it. Thanks. So you're doing, you're doing a lot. So uh, it's hard to keep up with somebody who does so many things. So where is it that we can follow you and learn more about what you're doing and, and try to keep up at least online? Not in the not in the course. We're not keeping up with you there. Oh well, you, sh you should at least try the course. It's it's a matter of just sorry, puppy dog. Um, you should at least try the course. It's just a matter of uh, challenging yourself. Um, uh, you know, just just get out of your comfort zone and give it a try. But to uh, to see what we're doing, I do have a website. It's called Farm in the Woods. That's with a Z. Da Woods is D A and then Woods W O O D Z. So it's farmindawoods.com. And I put all kinds, I put stuff on there about the animals. Um, we have bees, so put some things on there about them. They're they're not affectionate little critters, I can tell you that much. <laughs> um uh, so uh, the, the pigeon racing, something funny the alpacas might have done that day, or the there's always something going on lots of chickens you never know and um so i put stuff on there about that and then i'll put things on there about our tougher than tough uh challenge course and then um additionally um have an uh, instagram account it's called tougher than tough and there's the uh, dots between the words tougher than tough and um also, there's one more thing we're doing. When I say we, I mean Kalimba from season three, Tough as Nails. Her and I are starting a podcast called More Than Tough. And it's about us interviewing folks from the other seasons of Tough as Nails and just catching up, seeing what they're doing. Because you get that kind of dry spell between seasons and you have no Tough as Nails. So we thought, well, people want to know more about their favorite competitors on the show so we'll talk about you know kind of growing up things that shape them uh then we'll get into some of the things from the show um we don't go behind the scenes because well we want to keep that tv magic alive but we can talk about things like well what were you thinking sorry dog bone um but we can talk about you know, what was going on in their mind when they saw a challenge or um, just some things about uh, the team dynamics. Uh, a lot of things you don't see on the show and just some funny little stories about uh, what they were thinking or how they reacted once they saw themselves on TV. And then, um, and then we discuss what we're thinking about season four because that's going to be coming up soon. So there's a, just a lot of neat things we can, we can uh, get from from the competitors of Tough as Nails. And then also uh, a lot of inspiration because as I've been interviewing uh, the different competitors, uh, their backstories, I mean, the things they've been through uh, physically, you know, broken bones, torn ligaments, all kinds of maladies. And then, then to hear their stories about, you know, what they went through as a kid with either uh, single mother, excuse me, single mothers, poverty, uh, 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 anorexia, just, just the struggles they've been through. Cause it just, it's inspiring to know that you can go through all that. And then here you are years later on tough as nails, just, you know, killing it. And so that's, it's something we want to share. We want to keep the excitement alive and the positive energy from tough as nails by doing this podcast. Outstanding. Well, thanks for all that. I know that Holly's going to have all of that stuff in the show notes. So people are going to be able to people are going to be able to find you and uh, and go do that course. I'll do that on my next planned trip to Lancaster or Pennsylvania, okay. and I'll, I'll be right there. Okay. Um, uh, I did did want to say I'm not actually in Lancaster anymore. Oh, okay. Um, I grew up in Lancaster County, but we moved up to Juniata County, Pennsylvania, about five years ago. My husband and I. Okay. So. We're in Juniata County. It's central Pennsylvania. Yeah. But, uh, same state. 
Yeah, I mean, hey, I don't want anybody driving around Lancaster looking for my ha- person with my hat on going, where's Leah? You know, <laughs> it, it happens. I'm just saying it, <laughs> it's happened. Well, that's that tough as nails fame. And now you're going to have dozens more fans after this airs on uh, the Tango of the Lima experience. So thank you so much for coming out. We appreciate uh, we appreciate your service, of course, and your continued service to humanity and evening television. So uh, again, thank you for being on and we look forward to hearing more from and about you in the future. Thanks for having me, Jeff and Ashley. Uh, You know, um, I I, I mean it with all my heart. If anybody ever wants to come out, uh, just jump on the website, get our email and, and just, just come and hang out. We'll build a fire, cook some hot dogs or s'mores or whatever, hang out with the, with the critters. And um, I, I want nothing more than just to be able to share this, this energy and the joy and, and just the, uh, just how great it's been. This experience has been, I just, just want to keep it going and share it with others. So thank you. Perfect. And for the rest of you, we will be right back. So you were discharged with a 20% disability rating, but now you can't hear so well and need help. Contact an American Legion service officer. Service officers are free of charge and they help all veterans. Find one near you with our online tool at legion.org forward slash service officers. Woo, that was a lot of stuff. I mean, Leah, I mean, I'm gonna steal your story. She's done, she's done all the things. She's the Jill of all trades. And I love that turn of phrase. And I, and, uh, I love that even the animal names, she just is next level on every level. Like who puts like that hashtag much, level up Leah. That who should puts that be, much in the names and then can actually explain thing. them. Yeah. I mean, I, if, if I had pigeons and I could name them after superheroes, absolutely. Like, it's amazing. Like, I love all of the quirkiness. I love everything that she's doing. She's so positive and humble, and she just enjoys life. And she just she just loves opportunities. And I'm really excited to see that she's providing, you know, a, a different space to explore the trades and have that healthy competition, but promote leadership and togetherness. And I'm really excited for her and her, her next steps in her business and I think we all need to like recognize like she won season three like of Tough as Nails. I just want to clarify for people out there like she won the thing. She got like a what was it like a Ford F one fifty truck at like two hundred thousand dollars. Like she's big time. Like impressive individual. Wow. Yeah, I, lo- I looked it up. I looked it up because I was like, what is this amazingness? Because I like trades. You know, I went to a tech and trade school in between when I was going to school and high school and. I love it. I think there's a lot of application for the youth for 4-H. I think she's she's setting herself up for a really bright future and she's continuing to impress. And I hope and I when she's on the list for, you know, warrant officer for like she's going to get it. Like we just need all the vibes right now. Like she, we just need to push it on her because she's going to get it. She's on the list. She just got to wait. And yep. I super excited for her. Or she said she just has to keep breathing. <laughs> just keep breathing. And I love it. It's kind of like a Dory expression, like just keep swimming, just keep breathing, just keep breathing. I mean, and she does, she has like, she knows so much, done so much, and she has little quips and it's amazing. And yeah. I love the fact that she don't care what any of us think, even though we all think, I wouldn't care what anybody thought if everybody thought it was awesome. This is what everybody thinks she's awesome. So it's, yeah. uh, that's awesome. And now what we're going to do, it's the time we've been waiting for. Are you ready? <laughs> Always am. All right. Pew, 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 pew. It's time for rapid fire. All right. We are going to have uh, quite a rapid fire today. And it's uh, not all awesome, but it's all interesting. All right. The rapid fire number pew, one, the army vet who was prepping civilians for a pending civil war. Christopher Arthur built a business off his military skills, conspiracy theories, and eagerness for a second civil war, promising to teach potential students how to kill cops and military personnel, often by defending their homes with explosives and other deadly traps. Now he faces 20 well-deserved years behind bars. I put the well-deserved in. Arthur, 38, served in the Army as a cavalry scout with a career oscillating between National Guard and active duty that culminated in the rank of sergeant at the end of his nearly decade 
of service. Uh, I'm going to skip down to, but his lessons weren't intended for civilians to dip their toe into military training for fun. Arthur was seemingly preparing eager students in guerrilla warfare to fight against the United States military and law enforcement based on a military.com review of training materials he used. Whoa. Uh, if you're not watching, Ash's brains hurt. She gave a little, she gave a little temple massage. Uh, Super producer Holly had to take to biting into an apple because mm. we were choosing violence here. I, ah, wow. This is, oof. Wow. I, I'm just, mm-hmm. wow. Wow. Um, and he's one that got caught. Next, this is, I, I know, I know that's the terrifying part is that there are people out there that like have this really extreme, like, but need or want for so forth like we don't nobody wants that like to, for you to want that is just it's a reflection of the need for chaos and destruction and death and it's, it's just it emulates all of these negative things and why would you know and then you're going to train people like to me it feels very brainwashing and very cult-like you're just reading this like there's got to be some paranoia. Like there's got to be, there's got to be something, obviously we'll just throw that out there. I'm not a psychologist, but somebody needs to have some conversations with somebody who's far more qualified than I, because like, these are really extreme things to take in a market to a very specific group of people. Like, that's wow. Yep. And, that's it. Yeah. Wow. And then we wonder. Oh. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know what? Crap person. Don't like this person. No, thank you. Moving on. Moving on. I think you're going to like this person. Here we are for Pew Pew. That's rapid fire number <gasps> two. All right. Oh my gosh. This article makes me so happy. Navy Let's commander see. dresses up like pro wrestlers to present awards to sailors. This is from taskandpurpose.com. Leadership takes a thousand different forms. And one of those popped up on social media recently in the guise of Navy ship commander who dresses up as a professional wrestler while presenting awards to his sailors. Commander David Holland, skipper of the, oh, Arleigh Burke class. Aegis destroyer USS Chung Hoon has at different times traded in his navy blue coveralls for a bright green pair of pajama pants, a purple bandana, a fake bushy beard, a blaring red cowboy hat, a cheetah print leather jacket, and other extravagant duds for the most that most commanding officers wouldn't be caught dead wearing, let alone in front of their crew or on social media. But for Holland, He clearly feels differently, at least while recognizing sailors' contributions to the team about once every other week. No, about once every week. Since January 17th, the skipper has presented the sailor with a wrestling championship-style belt, naming them as Sea Warrior of the Week, along with a certificate granting them two days of special liberty. Pictures and events were posted to the Destroyer's Facebook page and recently on the unofficial Navy subreddit where Redditors praised Holland style. Do you see the picture? Oh, this is the best thing ever. Oh my gosh. I'm looking at the photos. I love this from a morale standpoint. Like, you know how motivating it is? Like, I would work my tail off if I got to choose what wrestler my commanding officer would show up as. Like, there's a picture of him, like, dressed up as The Rock. And I'm like, This is amazing. And then, oh my gosh, like Randy Savage, Macho Man, oh my gosh. Like leaders like him, and it even says this in the article. Oh, you're so excited. You're so into this. I feel like I have face hurts. I'm smiling so much. It says it's leaders like it's either it's leaders like him, as Randy Savage says, (laughs) as Randy Savage put it, are the cream of the crop. Like, come on, it's so brilliant my mind is ah we need more people like him and for I those of to, you oh. for those of you who don't know you probably can't tell by her persona but ashley marie garbul jamel donato was a huge huge wrestling fan professional wrestling fan she is look she's just staring off into the screen right now i've lost her for a moment but she's back so ashley it's not your birthday but happy birthday with this story yeah. I feel so excited. I want him to show up. I want him to present an award and a belt to me. I want to be 
Like that is just so exciting. Like we need more positive leadership. I bet his folks work super hard for him. And there's just, oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> Are you ready for pew, pew, pew? That's three. Not so rapid fire number three. Uh, we're gonna have new eligibility requirements that allow more veterans to donate blood. This is from the American Legion website. The US Food and Drug Administration has lifted a ban that prevented millions of veterans, service members, dependents, and civilian personnel stationed in parts of Europe from 1980 to 1996 from donating blood. The, the ban was meant to prevent transmission of a mad cow disease, a deadly disease that spread across the uh, parts of Europe in the 80s. So, I mean, that's all I'm going to read. I will say, that's all I'm going to read from, but I will say Derek Grimes is uh, challenging Jarek Wilhelmsen and uh, Courtney Van Zanten for photo face of the Legion because he's there with that that beard, man. Congrats on that beard, Derek Grimes, uh, who's a member of American Legion Post 116 in Fuqua, Verena, North Carolina. Did I get it right? I could have very easily cursed. So uh, he was, so Derek was apparently in, he was born at an army hospital in Frankfurt, Germany in 1985 when his father, also army veteran was stationed there. So this is the first time he's allowed to donate blood, Ashley. <laughs> we talk about red tape a lot and I just like, this like blows my mind a bit. I'm just like, what the heck? Because to me, if you were born in 1985 uh -huh. in a country that had mad cow disease and you haven't had mad cow disease in 2020, 2021, yeah, we need your blood. We need your blood. So I'm, I'm glad I'm glad that they, they fixed that. 4.4 million people that were previously unable to donate blood? Because of something that happened like mind blown like who's the who 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 dropped the ball on reviewing policies outdated by decades okay like let's talk about that who's that person i imagine there's probably some medical professional that will tell us some reasons why they needed to be cautious and 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 but we ain't medical professionals so to us it just seems like ludicrous For like 30 years <laughs> I, just, I can't i can't it's fine all right wow well i think i think yeah I think gonna, so many emotions, so many emotions. I, know. I feel like I need to go get blood today. So what we're going to have to do is wrap this up. That's our show for today. We hope that you enjoyed this version of the Tango Alpha Lima experience. And they, if they really love it, mm. what should they do? Yeah. Ooh. Well, they should not forget to subscribe to Tango Alpha Lima podcast on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you consume your podcasts. Please leave us a review and give us big old five-star rating so the world knows how much you adore us. Oh. And if you have a guest recommendation, go to legion.org backslash Tango Alpha Lima and click on the support the guest link. Take it from here, Jeff. What I think is I need to go learn these wrestling moves, man. And you do. You really do. Back, you say, I want you to yeah. practice your voice. I want you to practice. Seven, three, episode yes. 95. Mission complete. Oh!